Hello, I'm Bruce Lorenz, and this show is called Bruce on the Loose, and I talk to a lot of people in city government, the school system, and other people throughout Medina County. Bad, Brad Musgrave is our guest today, the athletic director at Wadsworth High School, and Brad, thank you for joining us today and giving us a little insight on the role of the athletic director. Well, thank you for having me. What about your educational background? Can we start there? Yeah, um, so, I mean, it, I initially went uh, to college to be like a sports broadcaster um, and then decided I, I really would rather go to the educational realm. I um, wanted to be a teacher and a coach. So um, uh, obviously I got a, a degree in education. So I was a special ed teacher for 10 years uh, and then I moved into administration. So I have a, a master's degree in educational administration. Uh, both degrees are from the University of Finley. I'm a Northwest Ohio guy by by uh, my lifelong you know, journey. And um, so I was, like I said, special ed teacher for 10 years, and then I was a middle school assistant principal and athletic director at a middle school in Finley. Uh, and then I moved on to uh, Napoleon High School up by Bowling Green. I was there for 11 years as high school athletic director, and then this is the start of year nine at Wadsworth as high school athletic director. Well, I'm sure some of those positions gave you kind of a foundation and helped Absolutely. you in your current uh, position here in Wadsworth. And, and I really wouldn't have guessed nine years. I would have said maybe five <laughs> or six, but time flies when you're having so much fun. It, it absolutely flies. And to be honest with you, uh, um, people say that I don't look it, but I, three, in a little less than four years, I'll be ready to retire. So, so yeah, time does fly. And, uh, yeah, it's by the time I'm done here at Wadsworth in, in a few years, I will have actually will be 12 years at Wadsworth, and that'll be longer than the tenure at Napoleon. So the, that one went that flew by as well. What makes Wadsworth a unique place to work? You know, it's it's very similar to Napoleon, where I was at before. It's uh, it's a bigger school district. Obviously, Wadsworth is bigger than Napoleon. Napoleon's probably the size of Talmadge, mm -hmm. um, but both towns have very small, quaint downtowns. And then they have a lot of, in Napoleon, it's rural area around them. Here, it's a lot of subdivisions and businesses around them. So, so they're very, very similar with the small, quaint, you know, downtowns, and then, but being a bigger district overall. Being athletic director, uh, one thing that really uh, has, goes along with the job is flexibility. <laughs> and COVID-19, I hate to ask you this, but it certainly <laughs> challenges you uh, maybe especially maybe more last year than this year yeah. and if you could talk a little bit about your approach and your coach's approach to COVID-19. Well COVID-19 obviously has dominated everybody's world for you know 18 plus months. Um, last year was something that that nobody in in America wishes that we had gone through. Um, on the sports end of it um, there was so many different protocols. It, it would start with um, the CDC, Ohio Department of Health, Medina County Health Department, Ohio High School Athletic Association, the amount of paperwork, Bruce, that I had in my office that was clipped together that you're supposed to know all these different guidelines was unreal. Um, and, and so filtering that, Dr. Hill has done an amazing job of leading our entire school district. So it, it, all those, all those uh, health entities and sports entities um, you know, getting that guidance and then Dr. Hill and, and Steve Moore, who was our principal uh, for the past several years, he, uh, those two were very instrumental in getting um, different guidance or different interpretations of guidance um, that we're supposed to follow. And then, uh, then obviously it would all filter downhill. So superintendent down to principal to athletic director onto the coaches. And so uh, everybody, you know, teachers, everybody were following pretty much the same thing. So. Yeah, it was, it was a big time challenge of, you know, only allowing so many people to be able, able to come into games, keeping people spread out, kids spread out, wearing masks, not using locker rooms, you know, no concession stand. Basically, nothing was normal, but we still had sports, and that was the most important thing was the kids got to participate in, the, in their chosen sports. Well, today I picked up a copy of the Medina Gazette, and I think Joanna has a picture of that. It indicated that uh, two districts in Medina County, Brunswick and Buckeye, their cases are going up, and the Medina County Career Center, which I know we have the compact, we don't get involved in that, 
they also mandated masks and uh, social distancing, so uh, we so could play those teams in non-conference play. And again, you might not know that until a couple days before the, the contest. Or maybe the day of the contest. <laughs> but as you know, Bruce, I mean, uh, the, the training that we have or the experiences that we have as athletic directors, um, is when we deal with spring sports, I mean, you're looking at potential rainouts and or something that could pop up and at, at a given moment. And so we're we were used to having to cancel something or move an event on short notice. So that's something it's not fun, but it's something that we have experience at. And we did deal with that quite a bit last year, and we've dealt with it just on a very small scale this year. Um, so we would be prepared to handle that, but it definitely could happen and, and has happened already for us this year. Talking about communication, uh, I noticed recently an article from the Ohio High School Athletic Association that many of our varsity coaches are not school employees. Does it cause extra work on your part to communicate with people that are outside the school district? It, it doesn't. Um, the benefit for having um, coaches in the school building is that they get to be around the kids all the time. That is the number one benefit. Mm -hmm. is, is it something that's, that is paramount? No, but it is a benefit because those kids, if they have a question, if they just want to go talk to their coach about something that they need to work on or, or something about practice or whatever, those folks, they see them every single day or have access to see them every single day during the school day. Um, in terms of communication, there's so many methods of communication now, as you know. Um, you know, I, I text, call, email. I mean, there's so many ways to get a hold of coaches. Um, we bother them at their, their given jobs if they're not school teachers. And uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, the communication isn't isn't more difficult when they're out of the building, but the benefit of the, them being in the building is that they'd be around, they're around the kids all the time. I would think one, uh, one or two uh, positives for the coaches to be there would be maybe a student's getting behind in their schoolwork yes. yep. and, the, and they urge them to, yeah. to get, or if they uh, uh, disrespectful on the fringe with a teacher and things didn't go their way and they snap at a teacher and they could intervene and, and smooth things out and get things on the straight and narrow. Yeah, and, and again, that's the more immediate thing, but uh, you know, with the ones who are not in a school building, guess what, they find out about all that stuff too. Um, and and our, our coaches have access to to uh, you know kids grades or at least you know they can make contact with teachers and and so it's it's just what I said that the communication is is equal I think um, for out of out of school coaches and in school coaches but uh, it definitely can be more immediate if they're in the building. Does the athletic department have a process for hiring head coaches? Yeah, everyone does. So so it, what Ohio school law mandates that you offer uh, coaching positions to the, the candidates inside your school district first, mm -hmm. um, then outside your school district to other school districts, and then ultimately the third level is um, what we would call the lay coaches who are not educators. Um, so it's those three layers, but usually the second and third layer of anybody outside the school system um, it's kind of a combo. It's just open to both of them at the same time. But in terms of offering, school law says you offer to qualified candidates within your school district first, uh, someone else's school district second, and then the people that are not associated in education, their third. What about the workings of the athletic department? Who helps you with the paperwork? You talked about that a <laughs> moment ago, and contracts and and so many other communications. Well, um, my secretary, Alicia Innocente, is amazing. She's wonderful. She helps tremendously. Um, in terms of all, all that kind of stuff, I mean, she's only an hourly employee, so she can only be at the school for so many hours a day. Um, so she helps, obviously, a lot. She's the front lines person. You know, she's the person that everybody comes in to see. Um, you know, as soon as they open the door, they see her bright, smiley face. She's the one that answers the phone. Um, she helps with a, a, a lot of things. Um, in terms of paperwork and stuff like that, I do a good chunk of that. Um, fortunately, contracts, as you know, um, are online through a system called the Arbiter. So electronic contracts, things have changed over the years. It makes it a little bit more instantaneous. 
Um, and so doing things on and through the internet um, is, has helped a lot, but there, there definitely is a lot of um, I's to dot and T's to cross um, and trying to get all that stuff done is probably what keeps me at work many, many hours a day. How is the athletic program financed for the Wadsworth City Schools? Uh, it's financed probably the same as every other school district. Probably, I'd say 95% of it is funded by people being at games, paying to get in. Um, so you obviously will have some donors, you'll have some booster groups help out because that doesn't always you know, finance everything. Um, so, but primarily it is people coming to the games and paying to get in. What might the booster club uh, assist with uh, maybe purchasing equipment yep. or uh, special needs yep. for particular coaches? Would they get involved in that? Yep, that's exactly what happens. So there's, there's two different ways. The, our boosters are wonderful and, and we appreciate all their support and everything that they do. Um, but they'll, yeah, so it's, it's big ticket needs that, that uh, you know, we can't finance um, based on the fact that we have 24 varsity sports and, and you spread the money out to everybody and, and it goes quickly. And when you're paying people, and what I mean by that, when you're paying for officials and different things like that, game help workers or what have you, um, yeah, money, money goes quick. Because um, I always say stuff and people cost a lot of money. And so um, when you're trying to do the, uh, the, I always say the wanted items or the big ticket items, yeah, you, a lot of times you're, you're looking for some help somewhere and the boosters definitely come into play with that. A second way is that, you know, we have our annual patron drive where our athletes go out um, in early August and they, they scour the community and, and are looking for donations and, and we do a great job and our community is, is tremendously supportive with that drive. Um, and so that, that helps fund that kind of stuff along with some other fundraisers like reverse raffle and what have you. Um, but, but when those kids go out and do that, our boosters will give a portion to each team and in an account called a discretionary account that's almost like a savings account for each sport. And they use that at their own discretion. That's why it's called a discretionary account. So, so not only can they ask the boosters for a big ticket item, but if it's something lesser of nature, or maybe they've saved up money that's been put in their discretionary account over time, um, they can buy some things on their own through that account. That would certainly motivate the coaches to get the, the, the troops motivated right. and get out there and do what right. they can right. to canvas their neighborhood and, and certainly all of Wadsworth. Yep. Okay, what about uh, pay to play or pay to participate? I participate, think it was, uh, Bruce. It, was, it was called. Yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> about that, Chief. That's all right. uh, did Wadsworth, does Wadsworth have that now, yeah. and uh, and do they ha did they have that in the past? And yeah. tell me the background of that. Well, I don't know when it was instituted um, because this is year nine for me, as mm -hmm. I've said, and so it was in place before I got here. Mm -hmm. It's still in place. It's uh, it's one hundred dollars per athlete per sport. Um, so if you're a three sport athlete, you're going to pay three different times throughout the school year. Um, and so the the whole point of it is is that it helps finance really expensive things from the athletic realm of things for the entire school district that like busing transportation is a, a very costly thing um, and you know coaches salaries and and things of that nature come out of that fund it doesn't it doesn't fund it exclusively but it, it really helps the the treasurer's office and the board of education in, in funding the higher priced things with athletics would that sometimes uh, preclude maybe middle school or freshman athletes from joining teams, do you think? It, it, can, it can definitely cause um, some problems for some families. Um, the middle school, by the way, is $75, whereas the high school is $100. Um, but I, it hasn't been an overall issue, mm -hmm. but we definitely work with families that it is an issue, and, and there's also scholarship or, or ways that we can help a family that is in need you know, so that it doesn't punish their, their child from participating. I think we probably would agree that being involved in sports can really help the ego and help the notoriety of that student. And, and basically we see students do better in school when they're involved. Do you see that? Yeah, and, and so yeah, so participation in something is, is definitely a, a true benefit for our kids. Um, it teaches them so many different life lessons, as you know. Um, and one of them is time management. Um, and how to, how to deal with your schoolwork, um, putting in all this time that you put into a sport, 
Um, and, and so a lot of different things of, you know, teamwork, you know, taking direction, um, being selfless. You know, you talked about ego. You, there's a lot of times you got to take your ego out because it's about the group and not you. Um, so there's a lot of things that are definitely a benefit. And, and the kids that are involved, you know, start to, like I said, the time management aspect of how to figure out everything. Um, it, it definitely is a benefit and it, it helps them later in life when they go to college and it helps them on into adulthood. The Suburban League is uh, quite a uh, combination of schools. You have <laughs> yeah. two divisions, yep. but uh, I can certainly take a look at a, at a bird's eye view and say there's very few times where teams can take weeks off. Oh, I mean, it's very tough. competitive, yep. uh, especially in the National Division, yep. which we're at. Could you talk a little bit about the Suburban League and its standing? And it seems to be very uh, solid and we hear a lot of conferences leaving and, and changes, but, but it seems like it's really uh, really there and, and it's not gonna change too much. Yeah, so, so I actually, when I came in eight years ago, it was the, the Suburban League was what it used to be that everybody remembered. I, I think it was an eight-team league. It's so mm -hmm. long ago, Bruce, yeah. I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, you're um, right. Okay, so it was an eight-team league and, and um, it, it was, I guess, we, I don't know if I wanna say top-heavy, but there was such a disparity between the biggest school, which was Wadsworth, and the smallest school, which was either you know Talmadge or Revere, um, and and the the student enrollment is huge. Um, how many different kids that you um, obviously have to choose from to participate in all of your different sports? And so there was a competitiveness that that everyone was looking at to try to even things out. And so when you brought in all these other schools um, and broke it up into two different they call it conferences, even though you and I would probably say divisions, like you said. Um, yeah, it, it, we basically, if you want to say truthfully, we were removed from the Suburban League because mm -hmm. we were the only ones that, that really moved on with Nordonia. So us and Nordonia and everybody else stayed in the other one. Um, and so we brought in more bigger schools than, than we did smaller schools, so to speak. And that's kind of how it's divided up with enrollment and, and competitive balance and yeah. There, there's no nights off in our league. And, and for certain sports that started off, like uh, I'll give you an example, soccer, it, it wasn't the strongest league um, eight year or seven years ago, whatever it was when we put this together. But now it's like, holy cow. I mean, th you're right. There's in virtually every sport, there's no night off. Um, and, and the reason it's so solid is because the leadership for every school, we all work together. We all get along with one another. Yeah, we have the rivalries on the field or the court or the pool or whatever, but we all really have respect for one another and we work together. And, and that's why our league is so cohesive compared to some other ones. I think that's important. And one thing the athletic director doesn't always uh, like to do is if some of the fans get a little <laughs> too rambunctious, I guess I could say. And uh, what, what would happen if some fans, uh, you know, stepped over the line? What, what would may possibly you do? Well, it doesn't even have to necessarily be me, uh, Bruce. We just had it the other night in a soccer game oh. where pretty much the entire uh, fan section from a school, and I won't name right. the school, okay. was removed by the officials. A lot of times the officials are the ones who are um, acknowledging that somebody is crossing the line because depending on what the venue is, how many people are at the venue, you don't always see or hear everything that's going on. But uh, yeah, things, things definitely can, can get away from us, we'll say. Um, we actually, in our school district, and, and several school districts have this, we have a spectator code of conduct. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody does get removed, uh, the principal and I end up meeting with that individual or individuals um, and have a discussion about things and, and let them have a copy of the policy and let them know, you know, what, what could happen in the future if, if they do not, I guess, adhere to that policy. The Suburban League really has been known. You could kind of look at season by season, and they're, they're really statewide recognition. Uh, yeah. Stowe has been very solid in football. Gymnastics, Brexville, yeah. I mean, is always in the, in the state tournament. Uh, wrestling has been pretty good in Wadsworth for uh, 
decades. A little bit better and pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but, I understand. That would be like yes. bragging. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, I think 25 straight years we won the Suburban League title. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. I, I think pretty good was uh, yeah. was probably too vanilla. <laughs> and, and in the spring, uh, you know, Hudson's always uh, pretty good in uh, baseball and uh, very competitive there, or Copley, track and field. So, uh, that has to make you feel good that the recognition is there and you say, boy, if we can, if we can stay on the field with them and, and, and play them and of course girls basketball, uh, you know, I remember uh, going to the state tournaments uh, several years in Wadsworth and the girls basketball can't, couldn't take a back, back seat to anyone for a while. Yeah. So that, but, but you already said it, you can't take a night off. So you just mentioned a, a bunch of schools that, that are really good in a lot of different sports and, uh, yeah, the, our league is tremendous, and it, it is recognized statewide, um, and we're we're one of them. So I mean, in a variety of sports, and so so if you have a down year, or if you have injuries, or you have COVID-related situations where you're losing kids, um, yeah, if the other school is at full strength, it's it's going to definitely be a difficult night. We talked a little bit about. Uh your soccer issue with uh, the fans. And I guess in New York, the um, one of the umpires got rid of the, the ground crew. Really? I think it was just the <laughs> other day, I think yesterday, the ground crew, and I, I didn't read the whole article, but they were, again, maybe crossing the line. And the umpire, I think Ted Timmons, got rid of the ground crew. So. So there you go. We better not have that here. No, no definitely. <laughs> uh, we don't need our own workers causing problems. Right. That gives me a segue into officiating. It yeah. seems like uh, uh, it, it's really hard to recruit young people. Uh, I do a little softball, 65 umpires and some umpires, three ladies. Yeah. That doesn't help. Although they've played for years, they know the sport, but we can't get women to, to umpire softball. Do, do you have any, uh, any ways that we can attack that? Um, in terms of drawing in women or just uh, Wh women and 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 uh, and many other people to fill those uh, those roles well we need fans to cheer for their team and not ridicule and basically lose their minds on officials during contests and that that's just the honest truth about it um it, it's not everybody and i mean i've i've been upset with officiating calls before myself but at the same time, you let it go. I mean, express your view or whatever, but you, you don't get personal. You don't ridicule people. You don't you don't cuss at them. You don't keep keep barking at them over and over and over, and don't let it go. And that's what some people do. And I I appreciate the fact that you umpire Bruce, but honestly, I I can tell you a story when I was um, at Napoleon and I tried to help out our middle school athletic director with a fundraiser he was doing with as a fifth and sixth grade boys basketball tournament and he needed volunteer officials and I officiated for him and I was a basketball coach for 15 years I played you know all the way through high school and I know basketball in and out and yeah it's until you walk in somebody's shoes you do not know how hard it is to coach to officiate you know to be an athletic director a teacher all walks of life so so it's easy to sit in the stands and be critical um, but it's different when you're in the, the line of fire. Um, and until people stop abusing officials verbally and sometimes physically, unfortunately, at other places, um, you're probably going to consider or continue to see the shortage that we have. And it, it does affect sports because there's times where you can't have games because you don't, there's no officials available. Yeah, a couple years ago in Wayne County, our neighboring county, uh, they had to cancel some varsity volleyball yep. because there were no officials. Yep. And I would think if it continues, maybe some of the younger programs could be affected, maybe a ninth grade or uh, middle yep. school games because uh, you can't find officials. Right. Uh, and we've promoted, uh, we had a three-year uh, opportunity to kind of progress to the varsity level. Now it's one year, after one year, and sometimes people might not be ready right. to do those varsity contests after one year. Right, but you're 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 in a situation where you're in desperate need of somebody. So yeah, you're now you're putting somebody in there, like you said, that that possibly is not experienced, not ready um, to to take on a bigger role at a, at a, a more prominent event, and and maybe they don't do as strong a job as maybe a, a veteran official would do uh, in the past, and then they take even more ridicule, and then they're you know, basically they're like, this isn't worth it. Just like when I told you that 
volunteer thing I did, the, the ridicule I took from fifth and sixth grade parents, <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, told, I told the middle school athletic director, don't ever ask me again. No question about it. I, I've been in those shoes before. What about <laughs> uh, the facilities in Wadsworth are, are, Top are notch. really excellent. The stadium, yep. which has multiple uses. Yep. Uh, then a couple years ago, you built a facility for softball, baseball, for some training yes. when the when a weather is, is foul. And, and all that, I would think the athletes would respond to that and say, hey, this, we take pride in this. This is, this is a great place to play. They do. We're blessed. We're very blessed. And, and sometimes people, I, I don't want to say they take it for granted, but sometimes I think they forget how awesome our facilities are until they go somewhere else. And then they realize, wow, we, we have it pretty good. And, and we really do. So we're blessed um, with the, the folks that here at the school system that, that you know, led the charge to put that stuff together for us and also the community for supporting it. It's, it's definitely a blessing. Yeah, the, uh, the upkeep. Sometimes we forget about the upkeep of those facilities. A lot but, of work. But I go and, and it look, it's very clean. Yep. It, it, it's ready for, for that contest. And I, I'm sure, again, the officials appreciate that. When they come in, everything yep. is, is, is A-OK -okay and yep. ready to go. Yeah, we have a lot of compliments. And, and you also host tournaments, I think, yeah. sometimes, too. Yeah, well, we host tournaments because, as you know, we, we could host our own. So in a variety of different sports. And, and yeah, so... Uh, so our, our facilities, like I said, we're very blessed. They're, they're top notch. Anything uh, you, you have your, up your sleeve rolled uh, to something new that uh, the, the citizens should be looking forward to? I don't think so. Okay. I think we're just literally trying to get through the, the right. year with the second year of COVID. It hasn't, I, not, I'm knocking on wood, right. Bruce. It right. hasn't been like it was last year, but uh, there's still issues there. And one of the big issues that we're dealing with now is it's, it's statewide, it's actually nationwide, is lack of bus drivers. Um, we're really struggling, and that's causing a huge challenge for us where we have to change either start times of games or, or what have you. We, we might even have to move a game a day or, or cancel it altogether because we don't have a bus. Well, let's put a plug right now. If you are interested in driving a bus, contact uh, the uh, board office, and they can get you there. And I will also say we could use some more officials if you're interested in trying it out. And again, prerequisite might be you played, uh, you know, soccer before. You played uh, basketball, and and there's a, there's classes you can take to get there. They'll start you at a lower program, and you would advance as time goes on. So bus drivers and officials, we're looking for you to step up to the plate and uh, do us uh, the favor. Brad, thank you for joining us today. We've covered a lot of good information about the athletic directorship, and the Wadsworth City Schools. Thanks for viewing. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.